Hey everybody, today Rado runs through San Juan, which could be called Puerto Rico the card game, because as you can see right here on the box it says, this is the card game for the highly acclaimed Puerto Rico from the same designer, Andreas Seyfarth, and I'm going to be doing a run through today so you guys can see what is all the hubbub. Now it's interesting, San Juan has recently gotten a second printing, a complete reprint, they've redone the art, they've added one new card, they've done a little bit of tweaking on some of the values of some of the cards as well. Now, I don't have the new version. I've got the original classic. And that's what I'm going to be demonstrating today. But depending on what cards I draw, you might see that I've actually kind of retrofitted my classic version of the game to use the new 2.0 rules and whatnot. Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. Here's the full lineage. San Juan came out. Then there was an expansion for it that came out, which was called, oh, it's a double expansion, the New Buildings and the Events. Now, I'm going to be playing the original game with the New Buildings expansion and the Events expansion. Now, flash forward to you know, this year, 2015, the new reprint has come out. The reprint comes with the New Buildings, but it does not come with the Events. So, if you get the new version of San Juan, there's no way you're going to be able to play with the events, but you will get these new buildings. The uh, office building, the park, the, the bank, the harbor, etc. So, I figured I would go on ahead and show you the original game with the events, just so players who are trying to think, well, should I get the classic, the, you know, the original first printing of San Juan, so that you could potentially get the expansion and have the events, or should I just get the new one which won't have the events? So I'm going to show it with the events so you can see what's what. But just bear in mind, if you get the new version of San Juan, no events. And the original version won't be, com the, the expansion for the original version won't be compatible because they have different card backs. Although, of course, you could always get solid card sleeves if you wanted. But anyway, so that's the situation. Let's stop talking about playing this game and let's actually start playing. So I've got the game set up here. I'm going to be doing a two-player game. This is me. I start, all players start with one indigo plant in San Juan. So we're going to be growing indigo and trying to make some money off of that. Also, at the beginning, somebody has to be chosen to be the governor. Who will it be? Jan or me? Jan or... It'll be me. Okay, so uh, this first round, I will be the governor. And the governor actually says what you need to do. First of all, remind everybody of the chapel. If somebody had previously built the chapel, they would be able to use its power right now. Obviously, at the beginning of the game, no one's built the chapel. Check all players' hand limit. At the beginning of the game, everybody has a hand size of four. The maximum number of cards is seven, unless you build a building that lets you increase your hand size. So both of us are, have a hand of four, so we don't have to worry. Nobody's gone over. If you had gone over, you'd have to discard down to seven. And then, Begin the round! Alright, so I'm going to begin the round as the governor. Alright, so let's take a look at what I got here. So I've got a carpenter, a gold... Oh, yeah, here's one of my little cheats. Uh, basically, the gold mine in the 2.0 version added this little caveat here, which is basically the way the gold mine works is you draw four cards. If they have non-matching values, you get to keep one. It's the same thing, but now you have to keep the cheapest one. So it kind of, they nerfed the gold mine a little bit in the expansion. And I did too, with a handy dandy little bit of sticky from a post it note. Okay, so the gold mine, I've got the gold mine, the coffee roaster, another indigo plant, and a carpenter. These are my four cards. Jen's got four cards as well. I have no idea what they are. And so what I am going to do on my turn is I am going to take a role. I could either be the builder, the producer, the trader, the counselor, or the prospector. Let's see here. And uh, you know that obviously means I can build new buildings. I can produce stuff with my existing buildings. I have so I could produce indigo, which means I could in a future turn trade it away to basically get income, or I could be the counselor, which basically lets me draw another card and uh, or the prospector which lets me draw another card in a different way. You know, I do think I would like to start it out with a bang. I think I am going to be the builder. So what you do is the player chooses it. They actually take this as a reminder to everybody that they are the builder. But Jen and I found in a two-player game, we just kind of tap it to indicate that it's it's you know it's used, so it can't be used again. So I'm the builder, and now what does the builder do? Well, it says quite nicely right here. Uh, there is an action and there is a privilege. What this means, and this is true for all the roles, what this means is the player who chose, in this case me, I chose the builder, gets to do the privilege and all other players get to do the action. So, you know, so basically the action is 
Each player can build one building. So Jen's going to build a building if she wants to. I'm going to build a building if I want to. But I get the privilege of paying one card less. So I get it a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to tap that DK, use it. And, uh, you know, generally when we play, we kind of do this simultaneously. But strictly speaking, there is a turn order. I'm the first, I'm the lead player, so I would do it first. And I think I'm just going to go on ahead and build this indigo plant. Now, this indigo plant costs one card to build. The way you build something is, if, if, I'm gonna, if I wanted to build this carpenter, I would have to discard three cards because that's the cost of it. And then it would give me the special ability and it'd be worth two victory points at the end of the game. Now, I'm not building that. I'm going to build me an indigo plant. And now normally that means I would have to discard. I'd have to throw one of these cards away. But not me because I am the lead builder. Remember, I get a discount of one. So that means I basically built this indigo plant for free. And now I've got two plants that can produce indigo. All right. And so, and that, that was it. I didn't build a gold mine or the coffee roaster or the carpenter. Now, I could have built the coffee roaster. The coffee roaster is very expensive. I have to discard four cards. If I wanted to, I could build this because remember, I get a discount. So I could discard all three cards and then I'd have a coffee roaster. And um, your coffee, when you produce it, is worth a lot more than indigo. So I could start up you know, a, a you know, much more prosperous engine, or I could go a little bit slower, just build another indigo for free, basically, and you know, maybe build this coffee roaster later. I think that's what I'm going to do. I mean, some might argue I should build the coffee roaster, throw the rest of my cards away, etc. But we're just going to go with this. All right. So that was it. And now, Jen gets to build as well. Because remember, everybody, all the players get to do this. So now let's take a look at Jen's hand and see what she's got. She's got a bank. This is another one of my little uh, paste-ups. Originally, the bank cost four to build, but they have made it a little bit cheaper. Now it only costs three to build, I guess, to make it a little bit more balanced. Jen's got two indigo plants and, oh, the library. Jen loves the library. Everybody loves the library. Now this is expensive. I'd have to, you know, Jen would have to discard five cards. She only has three. The library is super cool though. It's worth three victory points and it lets you duplicate an action. So when, in a future turn, when you say prospect, instead of only prospecting once, you could prospect twice. Instead of building once, you could build twice. So it's very, very cool, but it's crazy expensive. So I think Jen does want to get this build, but unfortunately she doesn't have five cards to discard. So, does she want to go on ahead, you know, she could, you know, build an, another indigo like I did, and then she could say, discard an indigo. But, you know, I think she's almost inclined to pass. She's not going to build at all. She is going to skip on this because she is saving up. Because, um, you know, if she builds on a later turn, it would cost her one less, so it would only cost her four, and she only needs one more card, and then she'd have the five, you know, the total, so she could build the... So, Jen is going to go for getting the library. She can't build on the first turn. We'll see how this works out for her. So, even though Jen could build right now, she's going to pass. All right. So, that was me. Okay, so I was the governor. I get first dibs. There are still four roles out here. And now Jen gets to do a role. And, um, right, and she'll be the lead on it. So she could produce. And now that's interesting. Yeah, she might want to do that. Because here's the thing. Jen knows if she doesn't produce, I probably will. Oh, actually, I should say one more thing. This is a special role. In a, in a three or four player game, everybody gets to do one, um, you know, one, one action. You know, so if, you know, somebody would build, somebody would trade, somebody would prospect, that's it. If there's a special rule in the two-player game. In the two-player game, the governor gets to act twice. So what's going to happen in this round is I chose one, and then Jen will choose one, and then I will get to choose one more. Especially, it only happens in a two-player game. And then, at the end of the round, the governor always moves to the next player. So next round, Jen will get to do two actions, and I will only get to do one. It's a special thing so that in a two-player game, it's like a three-player game. Three actions get activated every round. So... And Jen knows if she if she doesn't do producer, I probably do producer because the privilege on producer is producer means everybody gets to ha produce in one of their plants, whether it's a you know a, a you know an indigo plant or remember I, I could have had the coffee roaster that produces coffee. Everybody gets to produce, but the privilege is so whoever gets to whoever triggers this gets to produce two. So if I trigger this, I'll get to produce in both of my plants. If Jen triggers this, then she'll get to produce one, and I'll only get to produce one as well. So it'll be less efficient for me. But I don't think Jen's going to do that. Even though she could, it's kind of like a blocking maneuver. Jen is going to prospect. Prospect is an interesting one. It is the only action you can choose that nobody else benefits from. You can see the action is none. So because Jen chose prospector, I'm not going to get to do anything. But Jen will get to draw one card. 
So, um, Jen's going to get a card, and let's see, what is it? It is a goldsmith. She's got another value five card. But so now, Jen has got the four cards she needs to discard to be able to build this library next turn if she is the builder. All right, so Jen did Prospector, and like I said, it's the only one, so I didn't get to follow along. So that was that. Now, there, because I'm the governor in a two-player game, I get one more action, I am going to produce. And so, once again, the action is each player can produce one good, but the, the producer, which is me, can produce one additional good. Now, the way you produce goods is you draw, a, you draw a blind from the deck of cards. And by the way, this is a big, thick deck of cards. There's a lot of cards in here. So, Jen's going to produce. She's following along. And so she takes a card. We have no idea what this is. We'll likely never know what this card was. But Jen has just produced one indigo. A indigo plant can have one indigo card on it. She, this indigo plant cannot produce any more indigo until sometime in the future when somebody triggers the trading action, which is when you can convert this card into income into more cards. And this is all that's what this game is all about. Just trying to get more and more cards into your hands so you have more options, more actions. But anyway, so I chose producer, Jen produced, and I, as the producer, get to produce twice. So I had a very all right, so there we go. That was it. That was the end of the first round. And so at the end of a round, the governor moves on to the next player, which will be Jen. So this round Jen is the governor. All the stuff is available again. Let's see. And so now Jen, at the beginning of this round, reminds you, if anybody built a chapel, use the power. Again, no one's built a chapel. Check everybody's hand limit. Nobody has seven or more, or more than seven cards, so that's fine. And then begin the round. And now Jen is the first player. And so now, if she chooses Builder, she um, can build. And that's what she's going to do. She's going to go ahead and choose Builder, and she is going to build this library. It costs her four instead of five because of the discount. So she now has a library, which is a permanent power. The owner uses the privilege of his role twice, and it's worth three points. Jen just scored three points. And, um, but she had to discard all of these cards. You know, normally a library costs five, but it only cost her four, so she discarded four cards. These just get dumped over here, so she just built a building um, and discarded a bunch of cards. Now, I get to follow along. I can pay full price if I want to, and I could build as well. Now, I can't, I, I, I don't have three cards, so I can't build the carpenter. I don't have um, four cards discard, so I can't build the coffee. But I could build this gold mine, just kind of for fun. What the heck? Let's do it. I'm going to build this gold mine. Now, I have to pay full price, which is one. So, I could, we'll either have to discard this carpenter, or the, I think I'll hold on to the coffee roaster and try to build up for it. I'm going to discard the carpenter. All right, and so that's just gone over there. And so I have built, and so that gold mine is worth one. My, so I've got a total of three victory points. One, two, three. Jen's got four victory points. If the game were to end right now, Jen would actually win because this library is worth more, but it cost her a lot to do it. But anyway, so that was Jen's action. She got to build the library at a discount. And now Jen's hand is empty, and I am down to one card in my hand. The fewer cards you have, the fewer options you have. So Jen has chosen her action. And now, I think I'll choose an action. I am going to trade which is going to benefit both of us. The action here is everybody gets to sell one good. So Jen's going to get to sell a good, I'm going to get to sell a good, but then the important thing is whoever has the privilege gets to do an additional. So actually, I am going to sell two goods, all of my goods, Jen's going to sell one. Now, whenever the trader gets, uh, you know, gets activated, you flip the, one of these market tiles, these are randomized at the beginning of the game, so nobody knows until the trader happens what the uh, sale rate of stuff is. So we flip it and we find out that today in the market, here's the reality. Um, uh, indigo is worth one, sugar is worth two, tobacco is worth two, coffee is worth three, and silver is worth three. Now that's actually a pretty good return. But unfortunately, it doesn't really matter because both Jen and I only have indigo. Um, indigo never sells for more than one. But, you know, it could be really interesting. You might be planning on having a turn where you're going to try and sell a lot of coffee and you're hoping to turn this up so you can get three cards per coffee you sell. But sometimes you might flip it and you might find, oh, coffee's only worth two. And you might decide, well, you know what? To heck with it. I'm going to wait. I'm not going to sell my coffee. I'll sell something else. So, the, But as it is right now, at the beginning of the game, when all we have is indigo, indigo is always worth one. So anyway, so we revealed that, and uh, everybody gets to sell. Jen, I, I am selling two because I've got the trader privilege. And so I'm basically taking these cards again. We don't know what they were. And I'm selling two. Uh, so I sold the two, and that gives me, for each indigo I sell, I get a card. So my hand size just went from one 
to three cards. I've got three cards. Oh, oh, look at this. Actually, okay. Well, now we got to stop for a second. One of the three cards I just drew, in addition to the well, I also drew Debt Relief. Remember I said right up front, this game, um, the expansion had what were called event cards. This is an event card. Bear in mind, you will not get events. You cannot, you cannot get this game with events if you buy the new version of the game. You have to have the classic version and the expansion, which is what I've got. So, the way it works, whenever an event card is drawn, whoever drew it immediately puts it out on the public display for all to see. And what that means is, let me just move, make a little bit more room here. So, this, this event, debt relief, is now a additional action that any player could choose. In the same way, if somebody could choose producer or prospector, somebody could choose debt relief and trigger this event. So the events, and over time, there could be actually several events out, um, you know, which, which gives players a lot of extra options they could use. But anyway, so I was supposed to get three cards. I only, I, I, and one of them was an event, so I keep drawing until I get my, I'm sorry, my two cards, because of my two indigo I sold. Let's see, and I got a gold mine. I got another gold mine, okay. There we go. So, D D D. Now then, um, Jen. Meanwhile, she's gonna sell as well, and she only gets one. So remember, her hand was empty, and now she gets one, and she has another indigo plant. Okay. So there we go. So Jen built to get her library. I traded, and now Jen is gonna do another action because Jen is the governor. She gets to do two actions now, and this action she is going to be able to double up on because the library lets her duplicate, um, get to do an action twice. And I think, once again, Jen is just going to take the Prospector. And now remember, the Prospector is the one that gives, um, you know, I get nothing from it, but Jen gets one card. But now, because of the library, Jen gets two cards. So this library is starting to pay for itself. So Jen gets two cards. Oh, this is interesting though. Okay, so Jen gets two cards. What'd she get? She got an office building and a prefecture. Another card that has been, this used to cost three, it's gotten a little bit more expensive. It costs four now in the new um, reprint of San Juan. All right, so Jen got her two cards because of the power of her library. But here's an interesting thing. Because Jen just did the prospector, we're in the prospector phase. I've got a gold mine. I get to activate my gold mine now, which says owner turns up four cards from the supply. If they have, di if all four cards have different building costs, the owner can keep the cheapest one in his hand. All right, so I'm going to get to a gold mine. There's gold. Let's go. Now this is just total random silliness. It's very unlikely I'm going to draw four cards and they'll all have a different value. I mean, over the entire game, if you get the gold mine out early and you do it several times throughout the game, you'll be lucky if maybe it'll pay off once or twice. But let's see what I get. All right, sugar mill is a two. It's a one. Okay, and that's it. So I drew four cards, and as you can see, these both have the same value. So it was bust. I did not get anything. But if I drawn something that had, you know, if I say had drawn, um, you know, a library, this would actually pay out. And because all four values are different, I would get the cheapest one and I would take this guard room. But I didn't. Uh, the archive and the guard have the same value, so basically my gold mine was bust. It's just a total crapshoot. It very rarely pays out, but it's just kind of a little bit of fun randomness. And, um, you know, whenever it does pay out, so you shout gold! All right, anyway. So, that was the second round. Uh, Jen built, I traded, and Jen prospected, which triggered my gold mine. And now we move on to the third round. Everything resets. And this debt relief is just sitting here waiting for somebody to claim it. Now what it does is, whoever claims it, when somebody claims it, every player in the game immediately gets to draw three cards, which is awesome. Um, you know, that's a really, really big deal. And, um, but that means whoever's doing that benefits everybody. Everybody gets the equal benefit, which means the player that did it doesn't, you know, kind of almost wasted their turn. So what you want to do is you want to wait until you look around the table and you see that maybe you only have two cards in your hand, but your opponent, say, has six or seven cards. Because remember, the maximum hand size is seven. So you want to wait until this debt relief is not going to help somebody else very much because they'll go over the maximum hand size. So this might sit here for a while until the timing is right to use it. And that's true for all the events. There are good events and bad events, you know, like earthquakes and um, taxes and stuff like that. But there's also good events like uh, debt relief. And usually, they sit there for quite a while until the timing is perfect because somebody is wasting their turn to activate them. So you got to make sure you do it at the right time. So anyway, I am now the governor. 
Again, there's no chapel, nobody's gone over seven cards, we begin the round, and once again I could go. And so, you know, it might just behoove me to go on ahead and do production so that I can get a double production. And then, um, do trader so I could, you know, produce twice and, you know, get two more cards in my hand with my, with my two actions this round. But, you know, heck, maybe I want to build a well, which during the production phase allows me to get one card of supply whenever I produce two goods. Now that's pretty nice. I can produce two goods because I've got two things. So when I produce, if I have a well, I'll get extra cards in addition to what I'm supposed to produce. So that's pretty cool. Now on the flip side, I could take the Prospector, which would give me another card, and then maybe if I get Builder, I could build this Coffee Roaster. But that's if Jen doesn't do Builder. Now I can see that Jen has three cards. So if I don't produce, if I don't choose builder, she might choose builder because she might actually build something, which means I'd miss out on my chance to produce coffee. But I'd like to produce coffee, and so the game continues. That's it, folks. That is the basics of San Juan. Every turn, you always have these five actions. Although with the events, you can get six, seven, maybe even eight actions to choose from, and it's always a combination of building stuff, producing stuff, so you can trade stuff, and that's a yeah, that's a one-two combo, so you can get more cards. And you know, when you're producing indigo, you're not making very many cards, but when you're producing Silver. Once you have a silver mine or you know uh, coffee or whatnot, you could be getting a lot of cards. You know, alternatively, you could be prospecting, just get cards without helping anybody else. Or I haven't done this one. The counselor is interesting. Everybody draws two cards and gets to keep one. Everybody gets to do that. Whoever has the privilege of this draws five cards and keeps one. So if you're looking for a very specific card, you have a specific target, you might want to do the counselor because you get to draw five cards and keep one. Um, if you're not looking, if you just want to get a card, you're probably better off doing the prospector because with the counselor, everybody gets a card. You just get a little bit more control over what is. With the prospector, only you get a card. And so you keep going until somebody has built 12 buildings. And that triggers the end of the game. Then you tally up however many points, and somebody wins. Now that's it. If you guys would like to see some more gameplay, you can go on and hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to go to the extended playthrough. And I'll play through a few more rounds, maybe buy a few more things. Um, you know, maybe you'll actually see Counselor in action. Maybe debt relief will come about. Who knows? Or you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.